What up, dead nerds? I'm Luke, and let's get into how I find projects as a data analyst. And let's be for real. In order to get a job as a data analyst, you need experience. But how the heck do you get experience if you don't have a job? Well, projects. So I've always liked to build things to solve a problem. When I was younger, my friends and I built this Rue Goldberg machine. Although super fun, it wasn't really practical. I then moved into projects to solve a real problem. My parents needed a way to monitor their aquarium when away from home. So with a Raspberry Pi and some Python, I built an app for them to monitor it from their phones. Fast forward a little bit and I found this field of data analytics and I wanted to start applying my learnings into usable products. For one of my first mini projects, I wanted a better way to track my finances. So with a spreadsheet, I built a way to track my savings and help predict when I could retire. For my first big project, I built an app with my friends that went through and calculated food intake based on a diet I was following. This project allowed me to implement what I was learning along with getting direct feedback from my friends that were using the app. So over time, I've refined my approach to finding projects. I found that projects that solve a particular problem not only excite me in completing the task, but also were great at showcasing in my portfolio as relevant experience as a data analyst. So where do you start with looking for a project? Well, too often, I find that people are exhaustively searching outside of areas that they're familiar with, instead of focusing on right in front of them with the most impactful projects that they can actually start on right now. And I frequently get asked, can I apply data analytics in this area? And yes, I've yet to find an industry or domain that you can apply data analytics in. But in order to find this project, you have to implement a crucial soft skill of listening. And I feel this is the first step in the process of finding a project. What do I mean by listening? Well, let's take a more in-depth look at that meal app that I helped build. So when I was getting more serious about my mental and physical health, I was spending more time adding activity and also tracking the food that I was eating. To help with this, I signed up with a popular diet program that gave you this less than convenient Excel spreadsheets that you could go through and see how much food you needed to eat in order to meet your diet goals. The problem was these spreadsheets were a mess to not only read, but also to use. In it, they told you very precisely the amount of a macronutrient that you needed to eat. In order for me to figure out how much food I need to eat, every time before I ate, I'd have to go through and use ratios to calculate my serving sizes. Making it even more inconvenient, these numbers were changing on a weekly basis. When I asked some of my friends that were also doing this program, they also complained to me about having the same problems with this. So this was the first step in the process. I found a problem that could be solved with the data analytics solution by listening to my friends and hearing that they had a similar issue. The next step was building. I could have used a number of different tools, but at the time I was learning and trying to improve my Excel skills, so I decided to go with this tool. So I teamed up with some of my classmates, and over the course of a few weeks, we each took our different portions of the project and ended up building a solution for this problem. Because we built the solution for a real problem, we then gave it out to all of my gym friends to test. And this was probably the most rewarding aspect of it, as not only did it help save time for my gym friends, but also it allowed an avenue for them to give that feedback back on the product, and thus me and my classmates could iterate further on it. And you're probably saying, Luke, how does this meal app translate to experience as a data analyst? And actually, this project itself would come up a lot of times in interviews that I was in. With this, I could share how I collaborated with the team to use a tool and solve a problem. Interesting enough, this story resonated really well with a lot of interviewers that had a passion for fitness. So fast forward to my first job as a data analyst when I was learning about Power BI. One day, one of my colleagues came up to me and explained this problem he was having with analyzing financial data for an account he managed. The issue was that the data was only in monthly Excel files. So if he wanted to analyze beyond this, such as year or compare year over year, he'd have to go through and copy and paste each one of those monthly reports and put it into a single Excel file. And typically he'd end up running out of space in Excel. And this cumbersome process was only the data prep. He still needed to go through and analyze it and build visualizations. Asking around the office, I found that even other account managers had the same problem without any solution to solve it. So after finding this project by listening, I then moved into building the project. For this, I used the power of Power Query to combine all these Excel files over the last number of years. From there, I built a dashboard solution in Power BI that had a central location for all the account managers to go to. And then I allowed them to play with the dashboard and provide feedback. From there, I iterated on that dashboard solution and built it out further. So this process not only helped me build 
build a relevant solution for my colleagues, but this project was recognized by my boss. And this has led to helping me with a lot of the promotions I've received as a data analyst. Okay, so I've shared my process and given some examples of how I found projects. But what happens if you're interested in finding freelance work or consulting work? Well, I think I have the perfect person for that. One second. Man, Luke again. All right. Hey, what's up, Luke? Hey, Shashank. So I'm doing this video on how to find projects as a data analyst. And? So I was thinking maybe you could share your example of how you find freelance projects? Sure, yeah, let me just stop what I'm doing right now and help you out. Ah, thanks, man. That'd be awesome. Okay, Luke, so when, we come, when it comes to freelancing, there are a number of things that you can do. Personally, for my freelancing, what I like to do is I go into Upwork.com. And the reason I go into Upwork.com is it has a couple of features. I find that the website typically has higher paid uh, freelance work than something like Fiverr. And Upwork has a really interesting feature where you can uh, actually turn on a switch where people will only look for um, workers within your country. So that is one way to actually reduce the amount of competition you're facing in the workspace. Now, a lot of people ask, how do you charge an appropriate rate for the work that you do? What I did to get started was I actually went ahead and underbid basically everyone just like severely and I charged by the pro project. There's two ways to charge, right? You can either charge by the project or you can charge uh, by the hour. So by charging by the project, I gave my uh, potential customer, my clients, a lot of confidence because they knew that they would not pay more than a certain amount for my services. So by charging by the project, I was able to make my bids seem a lot better. Go onto YouTube and type in perfect Upwork proposal. There are a lot of great videos where people will actually talk about how they had the perfect Upwork proposal and how they were able to actually um, write a proposal such that they were the ones that got accepted basically every single time. So what I did is I underbid and I also uh, would go with a fixed proposal instead of charging by the hour. And by doing that for maybe uh, two or three different clients, um, and I made sure to do that for projects that could be done relatively quickly, I built up my ranking on Upwork, and eventually you get like this like best rated status or something like that. As soon as that happens, you can up your rate significantly. And I was even able to go to my previous clients and like for repeat work, I was able to say, hey, like you know, the my this is my actual rate. That was kind of like a teaser rate at the beginning, and people are almost always have more than happy to pay that rate. So, a uh, couple of tips: Upwork.com is how I did it. Uh, go on there, undercharge for uh, one or two clients, get that five-star rating, make sure that people really like you, uh, build a good rapport, and then start charging what you really should be charging for your work. Was that helpful, Luke? All right, I got to get back to work now. See you later, man. Thanks, Shashank. And when I'm not bugging him to actually make content for my channel, he's putting out a lot of great content on his channel to help you level up your skills as a data analyst. So be sure to go check him out. All right, well, what happens if you wanna get into a project that's a little bit more fun and involves some friends? Well, I also think I have the perfect person for this as well, although she's on the other side of the world, so I hope she's up. Oh. What does Luke want? Uh, hey Luke, everything okay? Hey too. Yeah, did I wake you? Yeah, you did. Oh, that's nice. Hey, so I'm doing this video on how to find projects as a data analyst. And? Could you share about that time you won the hackathon? Uh, yeah, sure. Let me grab some coffee real quick. Ah, that'd be great. So, you know, a while ago when I was looking for a fun real-world data project to do, I found this cool hackathon just about lung cancer research. I teamed up with some of my data nerd co-workers, and not only that we won the challenge, but also, crazy enough, we ended up being the co-authors of a research paper with some doctors in the Netherlands. I also showed you that paper the other day. Did you read it yet? Oh. I'm sure you didn't. Anyway, what happened was that a group of doctors at a hospital wanted to analyze the gene sequencing data of our human bodies. They want to identify which uh, gene patterns and mutations that are associated with a certain type of lung cancer. It's really important because, you know, different treatments will have different success rate on different types of lung cancer. And that's why the doctors had to turn to data nerds like us to become more data driven when recommending a certain treatment to their patients and especially immunotherapy. So during that hackathon, we were provided with a huge set of gene data from real lung cancer patients and 48 hours to turn in our findings 
endings. You know, in that two days, I got barely any sleep at all because we were so competitive. And after a lot of data wrangling and trying out different analysis techniques and ways to look at the data, a lot of ggplot in R, and mostly really nothing fancy. But yeah, we won this challenge. We found some really interesting patterns in gene expression that could classify the cancer types correctly for almost all of the patients. So it was a really fun challenge and I really didn't expect that we could have so much impact with our data skills. I would recommend you or anyone to do this kind of project. Okay, look, I'm going back to bed. Hope this helped. Thanks too. And when I'm not bugging her in the middle of the night with my own personal data analytics problems, she's putting out a lot of quality content on her YouTube channel around data analytics and data science. So be sure to check her out. And this story is actually a great segue into the sponsor of this video, which is by Z by HP's new short film, Unlock. I know what you're thinking, Luke, I'm looking for projects. What does Z by HP have to do with this? Well, they recently made Unlocked, an interactive short film made specifically for us data nerds to test our data science skills. This movie is broken into multiple segments, each with unique data science challenge, from data visualization and text analysis to audio signal processing and computer vision. And besides the challenge being completely free, Ken G helped with the design of this challenge. I've already got into the analysis of the first segment. It's been really great because the Papaya Master himself will guide you along in a tutorial if you get stuck. I think this is a great project in order to apply your skills. Ken uses Python for the analysis, but you really can use any tool such as R, Excel, Power BI, or even Tableau. Those that compete in the challenge are entered for a chance to win one of 10 ZBook Studio laptops and a trip to the Kaggle Days World Championship. In addition to this, Z by HP will also be sponsoring a hackathon on March 19th to not only work for this project, but also they will have speakers, live tutorials, and even more prizes to give away at the event. So make sure you check out the links in the description for how to compete in this unlock challenge and also for the hackathon. As always, if you got value out of this video, smash that like button. Don't forget to check out Tu's and Chachonk's channel as well. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. The things I do for a thumbnail.